B. Today I'm gonna show you my garden update with my matcha latte. Maybe not, I put that down. So I have my compost, in-ground compost right here. And I have some plants that are sprouting or in the process of sprouting, I hide them and tuck them underneath of um, other plants such as this one right here. These are my um, eggplant seedlings. And I hide these because Arizona is already about 100, um, one, three, four degrees. So 102, 103, it's pretty hot. So I feel like it's too hot if I expose it and leave it here or here. So I'm basically hiding them this way. So it's gonna be protected under the shade. So these are dwarf sunflowers and they are coming in they're blooming really nice and as i talk about in many other video this is a compost in ground compost and i just have this water sprinkler coming out and um, it's just a simple area for and here is my other setting and i have five of these and they are not in the most beautiful condition right now because <laughs> as you can see my shades are imperfect and there are a lot of trash that needs to clean up and here is my another in-ground so I'm gonna go from my raised bed so my raised bed mix uh, are doing great and I have been having this issue with um, worm cutworm so we have a lot of cut cutworm infestation so this is my sad black beauty eggplant oh my gosh they've been eating um the cut worms are the type of worms that hide underneath of um underneath of a soil like this and i can't find it so they're somewhere but i can't find it because they go into the soil at night and i mean in the daytime and at night they come out so as you can see my swiss chard been eating a lot and i'm talking about organic gardening so this is something i expect to happen but definitely it's a lot of work so as you can see these are not eaten so means that there isn't any cutworm underneath this so if i spend the time digging this out i will probably find two or three underneath each that are, have been eaten so if you see anything like this if you see anything like this and you, you don't see any obvious you know, caterpillar or something, then it's most likely you have cutworm infestation. And I removed this once and I replanted again, which means that probably I removed the cutworm because to see the new leaves are not being eaten. So this one has a little bit stress. So let's see, they come back. And I have a beautiful sunflowers and cutworm doesn't seem to bother um, bother these ones and I have tomato here that aren't fruiting just yet and I need to figure out why and here is my another bed and I have a lot of uh, uh, black eyed peas and I have some plants from winter that are still I'm just gonna leaving leaving this the reason is because we have a beautiful um, birds that love this um, plants and then this come and suck the nectar so I just want to leave it here um, a hummingbird, I meant. And I have probably some cutworms here because my sorrel are not growing well. Each, every time they try to grow, something is eating. And again, these are my organic garden. So I'm thinking like I'm also growing <laughs> insects as a pet. Oh, this is not a weed. This is a Turkish purslain called semizotu. And uh, these are um, really good and delicious with very high omega-3. So I intentionally grow this. As you can see, um, these are also um, a vegetable. And uh, you can buy this seed called semizotu. It's a Turkish type of porcelain. And here is lots of my pole beans. They are fine. And they are from a dollar shop. So... I buy this from dollar shop and then considering it's not a heirloom or it's not a 
uh, suitable to Arizona weather, it's doing fine. So I like that. And this is my temporary shade situation that I aren't really happy about, but I have to find a structure and I have a baby tomato growing here. And uh, I think it's doing well, it looks like, but it's not fruiting at all. And here's more sunflower. And sunflower seems to be doing again really well. Nothing is really eating. It's leafy and happy. So here is my little spots. And this is my unfortunate, my favorite, favorite snapdragon. It dried out. So sad. And I like yellow flower. So this is Coreopsis that are coming out, which I will show you. I have a whole bunch more blooming over there. And uh, this is, maybe you want to see this one. This is my a dragon fruit. Ho oh, ho! And I'm super excited because this arm is coming out. And uh, this was a uh, cutting was uh, given by my neighbors. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm, I'm basically using this dollar tree a um, cover and then creating a shade. And I'm using this um, to push it in so that this doesn't blow or this doesn't be um, moved by the wind. Okay, so this is my spaghetti squash. It is need. It needs to be. Um, uh, it needs to be trailed. I need. I'm gonna go to Home Depot and buy some kind of a, a support system. And these are not very happy because in Arizona, obviously. Oh, oh there is a praying mantis. Do you see this? Do you see praying mantis? Oh, right there, my baby praying mantis. Oh, baby praying mantis, so cute. We did not buy these eggs. They just come from somewhere. Here. Hi. Hi there. So I hope they will become a grown-up and mature. So these flowers are not happy because they're not suitable for Arizona weather. Unlike my other wildflowers that are happening over there. So they're drying out. And these do very well in Arizona. Um, I forgot what it is. And this is elephant, um, elephant food. They're doing good. And these are also, uh, I'm propagating. I have um, my whole bunch in other room and other space, and I'm just trying to propagate. Okay, so this is my raised bed number three, and it has Armenian cucumber growing. By the way, if you still want to plant Armenian cucumber in Arizona or Zone 9B, it's not late. You can plant this from a seed throughout May. And you might not start harvesting until August, but it is amazing. I mean, we eat this every day during the summer. They are like our stable food. My kids love it. And they're actually melon and not a cucumber. But if you harvest them while they're small, it's delicious. And we have more tomatoes. And these are tomatoes, uh, yellow pear tomatoes. And these one do fantastic in Arizona. They are amazing because they are very versatile, strong, and uh, I mean, you can not go wrong with this. So if you haven't started from seed, you can buy the transplant. Okay, so here's more Armenian cucumbers, and it is going like this. Hopefully, it's going to create some beautiful shade. And I have a Swiss chard again here that I have transplanted from bed number one. So you can see I have been harvesting whole entire winter. I have harvested, I don't even know, maybe like a five pounds of a beautiful leaves. Ate so much. And I moved here because it was getting crowded, bed number one. So I moved here and it's growing really well. In Arizona, this is pre-annual. They grow years after years after years. In other states where the weather is a little bit harsh, they are at least gonna survive a year and a half if you they can cross if you, if they can pass the winter. So here is basil, and I plant my basil with my tomato so that their flavor, tomato flavor, gets better. That's what I heard. So I plant them really close to each other. And here is my not so doing Anaheim pepper, and I don't know why it's been in this tiny situation for as long as. I know, probably five months, so I did something wrong and I can't quite figure out. 
so i added some nitrogen and stuff like that it's not doing i'm just leaving it here hopefully it takes off and um, these are strawberries and they're doing pretty well i bought this from a uh, little tubers and they're doing great okay so let's move on to the bed oh and i have some beans there and let's move on to my bed number four and this is uh, from seed it's been I've been growing about five months and started in December, but again, there aren't much fruiting. There's just only one right there, and that's my first one. So I have to figure out why my tomatoes aren't fruiting. The flowers are dropping, so I have to do some reading and research. Maybe the weather is already hot. And I have some okras underneath. I have one, two, three, four, five. And then I have a whole bunch of okra on this side. And this is my temporary situation. It is a badminton um, netting support system that I just put it here. Um, and I'm just using to cover, okay, like this. But that's not, this is just a temporary situation. But it's better to put something than nothing because I don't want tomatoes to stress. So I did that. And I have cilantro that blooming. Oh my goodness, this is, uh, I don't eat cilantro that much. And I don't know whether you can eat the cilantro flower. I have no idea, unfortunately. So let me know if you eat cilantro flower. I know some are, you know, the, uh, these are turning into seed. And I know some people eat seed. I'm very sure flower is edible, but I don't really eat uh, so it's just starting to go crazy we eat this basil every day my kids love it so we've been harvesting whole bunch every morning i come and harvest three or four you know of these and then it just keep coming out so it's pretty fast grower all right so here is another pepper that's not doing happy and there is the same, exact the same pepper that I started to grow from seed five months ago. These are shishito pepper, Japanese pepper. And it's even blooming right there. Oh my gosh, it's blooming. And they st I started them at the exactly same time. So I don't know why this is unhappy and this is happy. So maybe it's moist. Well, there should be enough water going there. So I really don't know. Or it's the fact that I have planted some uh, beans next to it because I was told that all these beans give uh, beautiful nitrogen. So they're about two and a half inches apart. Maybe that's what I need to do. Plant another beans right next to it. And eventually I had a plan to cut these before the flower blooms. So that way all the nutrition goes to the plant next to it. But I might just let it grow. We'll see. I have a whole bunch of beans. And this is another cucumber that is not Armenian cucumber. And I had not been successful growing cucumber that are not Armenian cucumber. So honestly, I don't know whether this is going to turn into cucumber. Even if it did in Arizona weather, it might be bitter. Not so tasty right now. So let's see. And I have more purslane, Turkish semizotu. I love these. Um, like I said, I have been growing intentionally. These are not weed. I intentionally grow this. And this is rainbow pepper. It's doing okay. And uh, it feels a little bit crowded. So I might have to um, just kind of clean up here. And okra is doing fantastic. Some of the okra flowers coming in. And if you love okra, it's not too late to plant it right now in Phoenix, Arizona. Any other um, climate, I believe they will be, they will be perfect. Okay, so here is number, number. Okay, Whoop. this is number five, the last raised bed, and this one has beautiful zucchini growing. So I need to start. Um, I might hand pollinate this one. The little challenge is that I need to put some cover on. But I want at the same time some bees to pollinate them. If I cover them too much, then the 
then the bees cannot come in and find the flowers. So in the morning when I wake up, um, since I don't have a, um, a work or office that I need to go to, <laughs> thankfully, I spend a lot of time in the morning coming in here and then opening up like this. And weather is cloudy and I don't see much pollinators right now. And I open it up like this. So whatever the insect can come and pollinate. And then towards the afternoon, I will cover the shade from here and then cover it down like so, okay? And the sun goes over from this way. So this is where the sun is setting. So I cover um, towards the evening to make sure they're not getting sunburns. So I used to grow a lot of uh, carrots underneath this. And I just pulled these out. You see the one last carrot growing over there. But uh, that was a great way to save some space. And I have some um, purple basil growing here. Okay. Um, and uh, I have Swiss chard growing here that has been eaten. I can see obviously there is some kind of bugs. But uh, I have uh, so much Swiss chard. I don't really, I don't really get to eat. I just don't have a, <laughs> I have to eat this every day if I decide uh, there is a bug. There's something in there, you see the poop? Now that is not, um, that is not a cutworm. That is uh, something else that's eating. If I go in here, I'm very sure I will find some worm, caterpillar or something. So I have to come back here and then clean some and see if I can save this. And then I will come here and remove some of these um, leaves from zucchini because these zucchini's leaves um, will cause the plants if it's touching the soil like this. It will create some uh, disease, so you don't want to do that. And also, if it's the leaves are too crowded, the beneficial insect cannot find flowers. So I need to make sure I come in and cut and get rid of all the leaves. Old leaves, not all the leaves. Old leaves. So I have five zucchini here. All right. And um, the last thing I wanna mention is that I am in the process of <laughs> cleaning up this. Um, this, by the way, I just added here, and this is also an in-ground compost. Not in a perfect situation, but with weird bag of insect growing. Somebody's eating beans uh, uh i'm sad i think we have another tape um cut worm here because if i cover this this is not a bird bird is not doing this i think we have a more i have to dig up and find some tape worm oh no that's sad i'm sad okay so here is the last thing i want to show you but yeah as you can see i need to pave here and the paving here will cost between 4,000 to 6,000 here, depends on how I pave it. Um, I'm thinking whether I should do a DIY or not. Um, because in the winter, when the haboob or storm come in Arizona, then this is gonna get muddy and I won't be able to wash, walk nicely. And I wouldn't like that. So I have to think about saving some money and installing payment, unless I do DIY. And uh, this is, I just paved myself, but as you can see, it's not a perfect job. I um, dug up some soil and I put it my stepping stone, but they're not perfect. Nothing close to perfect, but it's okay because it's inside of a uh, in-ground bed. So I don't have a problem, but I do have a problem here because this is part of the garden and then if i do a pavement um <laughs> this way and it has not so professional work i may not like that so that's that and here is my um, in-ground bed right here and as you can see i have this uh, fence and uh, this is for two of them I purchased about $64, they come two of this. So I really like this, it's because it's pretty and get rid of, um, and it's protect from uh, cottontail bunnies. We have a lot of bunnies in Arizona 
And uh, we also have beautiful cats who chases the bunny away. So I am opening this gate, but if I am going for a vacation or something, I will close it. And I haven't had any bunny come in since the cat is around. But if the cat wasn't around, I probably should close it at all the time. And these are my beautiful Dollar Tree flower seed mix, wild wildflower seed mix. And they've been just so gorgeous. I love it. And these are gladiolas. I don't know if I'm pronouncing right, gladiolas. I love this because they come in so many different colors. I planted the bulbs about four months ago and they're finally coming in purple and this one is a white and I feel like I need to support this because they're just a little bit wobbly but I love putting some uh, flowers and especially these uh, marigold because this prevent all kinds of insect and pests to pass over there so it's like um, pretty very beautiful way of um, protecting the in-ground bed and these are coreopsis by the way these do fantastic in arizona so if you um want to add some pop colors and and these grows anywhere even this one right here look it's growing in the soil that i didn't even add any compost so this is just a native soil and over there i added some I sprinkle some um, mulch and compost, so there's some more nutrition, but this will grow anywhere. I am not kidding. And here is all kinds of beautiful, look at this bachelor's button, Coreopsis. And uh, I didn't know the name of this, so I asked uh, my YouTube subscribers. Thank you guys. And somebody, a couple friends told me what this is. I forgot the name, but now that I know, I will be able to buy some more seed. Or maybe I collect from here. And I have this long tube going here. And I have a spaghetti tube coming out. And I have more plants here. The whole purpose of that is because I wanted to grow my sapling. This is my peach sapling. And this is was given by my neighbors. Whose uh, mother tree was right next to the wall. So I'm trying to create the same situation and that's why I put it next to um, next to this wall so that it doesn't get morning sun and afternoon sun will be shaded by this. That's what the uh, mother tree has. So hopefully they'll grow. I used to have another one here but they, they died. So I ended up planting some, um, um, some of those um, black eyed peas. Okay, so these are mostly my update in my March, my May garden. And as you can see, nothing is perfect. <laughs> it took a really long work. It took about a year to start. I bought this house a year and a half ago. So it's been a year and slowly adding. And as you can see, oh no, oh my gosh, the guys. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. Oh my gosh. I, somebody is doing this to my Moringa. Unbelievable. I planted about 20 Moringa and oh, every morning I come here and find something's eating them. Oh gosh. I think the whole entire Moringa is gone. Look, it's all gone. What? So again, I might have a cut worm in here because I covered, thinking it was the bird that eating them. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. So if somebody's eating and not eating the leaf and playing like this, there's a high chance that it's another cutworm coming back from the soil and they hide somewhere there at night and come out and go through this because it's not fully sealed. And go there and eat them. The cutworm somehow they don't bother tomatoes. They don't. Strawberries. And they only eat certain things. So I have to start my moringa again in a container like that. 
and wait until they get more mature and probably bring it back here. Oh, okay, well, that happens. So we have to figure it out one by one. All right, well, we have um, some carrots still growing here and some, um, these are pink celery which isn't growing really well but considering it's just a very tiny it's been very delicious and flavorful so i did add it to the salad it smells beautiful but i expected this to grow much thicker and stronger so either i didn't have enough fertilizer or maybe i did not plant it the right timing so because it's getting hot and it's starting to bolt see this it's bolting so I have to um, harvest this. But my kids love it. These are very pretty and added to salad. And I added to uh, tuna salad. It's really delicious. Okay. And um, my um, watermelons starting to grow. They're still baby, tiny. But I really like my watermelon. Hopefully they will take off. It's It's been in this condition for a long time. And then suddenly when the weather heat up, they take off. They get really, really grow, really, really fast. So I know this is not, doesn't look like it's growing anywhere, but I know it will at some point. I think I cover mostly. Um, so I have a lot of different plants growing here. And I have a lot of unsuccess and lot of success and then you have to learn through just doing it all right well oh this is my new addition a little turtle say hi yeah oh and uh, i have hummingbird feeder we have a hummingbird that lives here and they absolutely love that and also, let's see, oh, here, also I have peach tree right here. Um, the sapling is doing okay, but they're not doing fantastic, but they're doing okay. And uh, I'm trying to plant more plants here to create some shade. So the summertime, this will get enough moist from, if there's any plants like this, they'll create more moist and shade. So I planted some Malabar spinach I hope I can trail them up and cover some of the saplings. All right, so that's that. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will keep you guys posted how this crazy <laughs> garden turned into. And hopefully this is gonna turn into a beautiful garden in a bit. All right, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.